You are listening to an exclusive interview on Bass Musician Magazine. The interview starts now. Hey, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of being backstage at Cirque du Soleil with my good pal bassist, Bobby Brennan. Bobby, right. how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Good. Good to be here, man. How are you? Oh, man. Super, super. So, we are very excited. Bobby is in the show Corteo here in Portland, Oregon today. By the time you see this, Cortel will have moved on and we'll make sure we talk about how you can find out more about that but let's get started a little bit with your background Bobby you've been playing since you were 13 if I understand yes, correctly. Yes correct yeah yeah. So uh, tell us about that bass journey. Uh, like I was telling you earlier I went to see Bruce Springsteen at Madison Square Garden with mm -hmm. my uncle. My uncle bought me tickets for my graduation of junior high school and then after that concert I was blown away and I went out and got a bass nice. and I never looked back. I just started playing transcribing stuff from at that time I was listening to Van Halen and Iron Maiden and, and then my uncle bought me Stanley Clark School Days and then I listened to that album and I was blown away actually I wasn't even blown away by Stanley Clark's playing who played great it was Steve Gadd oh, wow. who blew me away and I was like man who is this drummer you know I at that time in New York you always went to Tower Records and you bought as many CDs and records as you can get so for me I was like looking at all the names on Stanley Clark's school days and then if I saw that name I bought it you know so and I said Steve Gadd was on everything you know so I was buying everything that he was on which introduced me to all these other great musicians and one thing led to another I started studying with great bass players mm -hmm. and i man i never looked back i just it's just something that came natural to me and i absolutely love playing the bass gotcha. still to this day yeah and and with this kind of show you have also formal training i would i would guess yes yeah i <laughs> went to college for it uh, i studied with a lot of great bass players uh, charlie hayden the great late charlie hayden okay. And Charlie introduced me to Ray Brown, and I got to take a few lessons with Ray Brown, which was nice. a treat. Another great place player in New York City, uh, Scott Colley, who mm -hmm. plays with everybody. And uh, Derek Oles. I went to Cal Arts in L.A., okay. where I went to college. So I got to study with a lot of really great bass players. The, uh, the first bass player I studied with in New York was a guy... He lives now in Chicago by the name of John Abbey. And he really put me on the right path of really learning the, the instrument mm -hmm. and and still to this day when i speak to him i thank him for that and then another teacher i had in new york john dewitt he kind of same thing with the upright bass you know john was more john abbey was more for the electric and john dewitt more for the upright and Gosh. They put me on that right path and uh, and kicked my butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Well, they did a good job preparing you to do. Broad you have a background in Broadway. Yeah, I've done uh, some Broadway tours. Uh, my latest tour I did was uh, the Cabaret National Tour, okay. and uh, yeah, really fun show. It was all upright, all half notes and quarter notes, the whole show, you know. But that was that era, you know, of writing. And but I enjoyed playing it. I had a lot of fun playing cabaret. So. Very nice. And then yeah. you've been with Cirque for the last since November of, of 2017. Well, yeah, my first show was in 2009. Okay, I did a. It was their first introduction of shows they were doing for theater, mm -hmm. and the show I was with was called Banana Spiel. Okay, yeah, and it's funny name you know people when we heard the name we were like what yeah. <laughs> and it didn't do as well as they were hoping for so it, it lasted almost a few years but that was my first introduction and as far as the show I mean it was just it was just crazy what we were going through because it was composer we had to composer and then this person was let go and then they had to bring somebody else and so it was not the best experience mm -hmm. but as far as a company like Cirque took very good care of us and they do and, and I love working for Cirque and this time around this is what I wish it would have been back in 2009 this experience with Corteo has been fantastic uh, I work with an incredible band and an incredible cast and I couldn't be happier I love playing the show and then, and on top of that it's a great bass book it's one of the be I think it's one of the best in Cirque's out of all the Cirque shows and I love playing it every night you know so tell us a little bit about this score I I, I if I remember correctly Corteo actually means procession yeah it's yeah got kind of an Italian Italian uh, uh, twist yeah. to it how does the score tie in with that 
Well, there's a lot of Arco bass playing, okay. so you have a lot of those low notes at times, and the score is beautiful. It's just the show is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I, you know, and again, what I love about this show too is you had a bunch of different composers, but they all had, I guess, the same kind of vision of making the show beautiful and this show is beautiful it's one of the i think it's cirque's most beautiful show and that's what a lot of people at cirque visualize i mean what what they say i should say not visualize but when you see it you know it's you've seen it before have you seen it okay we're we're looking forward to seeing it today this is exciting i didn't know if you saw it when it was a big top show no so but as far as the score goes i i it's just fun because there's a lot of electric bass in it as well as upright. It's mm-hmm. probably 70% upright as well and 30% gotcha. electric. And it's a, just a fun score. Gotcha. It, it really and, and with this, I know a lot of the musicians that look at Cirque, how, is there any part of it that you are able to kind of put your own spin on it or are you pretty much playing it by the book? No, there's, there's a little bit I, where I have some room. Uh, for the most part, you know, when I first learned the score, I was, you know, I was just reading note for note. Sure. But then there's times when I, I'm like, well, I'm going to try this or try that. But then there are times where you're just giving chord changes and it'll say groove here or bass fill or something like that. But And our MD is fantastic, man. He's one of the best I've ever worked for. And he makes it really, really really fun and that's why we have a blast every night because it really comes from leadership Uh and he makes it fun because that's really what this is about we have to have fun doing this otherwise no one's going to want to come to work you know <laughs> like if you know what totally, i mean totally totally so, well and the band it's comprised with you've got bass what else, what else so is? there's bass mm-hmm. then we have roger who plays keys uh, and he's our band leader mm-hmm. then we have next to well basically let me explain we're in all separate pits really far away from each other maybe about oh. 50 yards away oh, i wow. guess you know we're pretty you could see each other but we're far enough where you know we're just far away yeah. really you know but so i'm in my pit by myself and then Aurelie, a great vocalist she comes on a couple times during the show mm-hmm. and sings next to me for, for, for the most part i'm just by myself hanging out you know wow. which is which is cool and then also boring at times you know <laughs> and then across from me is roger our md playing keys one and then phil is our assistant md playing keys two and also saxophone then across from them and diagonally from me is ev uh she plays guitar and accordion elaine is our male vocalist and stefan plays violin and then the drummer alex he, I never see the drummer. This is the first gig I've ever done where I never oh, wow. see the drummer, except when he's up on stage. Uh, you'll see in the show, he plays on a tune where he, he'll play up on stage with a snare drum. And Usually they put the drum and bass we, together. We, yeah, I know, but we just were, <laughs> we have these huge curtains separating us. It's the first gig I've ever done where I never see him. He's yeah. the only guy the whole show, and the most important guy I really should see, but yeah. it works out, though. But there's, there's times where... We both play like certain licks, but we have no idea we're gonna do it, wow. and we do it, and it's like, wow, that was kind of funny, you know. And we have little things we do just to say, hey, man, I'm listening to you, you know, sure. like little little tricks we do or little like funny jokes in between, just through the music, you know. Very cool. So, very cool. so it's great. And then what I love about the band too is everybody's from different areas around the world. Mm-hmm. Our band lead is from England. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lives in Canada now. Our sax player is from Montreal. Our male vocalist is from Montreal, our violinist from Montreal, and also he lives in Panama. Okay. Eva Guitar Accordionist, she lives in Belgium, and Alex is from Brazil. Wow. So it's kind of fun. And then I'm from New York, you know, though. Everyone has their. As if we couldn't I'm, tell. I'm so New York <laughs> in this show, and everybody cracks up about that, you know. They're always making me say certain things. Hey, man, say water. <laughs> So that's fun. The band, I love this band. I mean, they've really cool. become family, and we have the best time, and and yes. it's the best job in the world. You know, I'm very oh, grateful man. for this. You know, and we've so many times we've been so thrilled, especially with Cirque, that they continue to use live musicians. Yes. Yeah. Which in itself is great because music is our thing. Yeah. And we understand they need the flexibility. We we've seen that that sometimes. If it's something's taking a little longer, you've got to stretch it out. Absolutely, uh, and and that a flexible area there. And you know what? And sometimes too, though, and that's very very important. I I agree. You got and to have a live band that you could do anything. Yeah. 
all you have to do, and we trust me, when we play this show, there's been times where, you know, Roger will come on the mic and say, guys, we have to repeat this section again mm -hmm. because, you know, the trick didn't work right. And so we're always prepared, mm -hmm. which is good. Or if somebody gets hurt or somebody gets sick, we have to rearrange the, sh the set, you know. So it's kind of fun. You come to work. We don't know what version of the show we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, we had, um, you know, some people had injuries and we were every night was a different show, which is good. So you keep it keeps you on your feet, keeps you you know knowing the music mm -hmm. or relearning the music just in case yeah. you know or just keeping up on it but you're right yeah having live musicians is a big especially in this kind of show sure. well and it's we important. we when we came to see curios uh and these acts are hard they yeah. they, they don't do necessarily easy stuff that's like no, oh i think no. i'll go home and try this <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, they yeah. were doing some balance act where the guy was like balancing on a bongo board but he was on top of balls on top of other things it's amazing and, and they needed to stretch out to get it to where it was like yay he's at the <laughs> top <laughs> and we're all like <gasps> <laughs> and the band keeps it going and yeah it's, yeah it's, it's great it's just way. it we just build up to their act and that's what it is. It's a team effort, you know, and, yeah. and these these artists are incredible, you know. I just went and saw another Cirque show on a, my vacation, mm -hmm. and it was, just, you know, I got the same feeling as I see? get. I saw Luzia. Okay. And the reason I wanted to go, well, I was in Orlando, Florida, and they were performing there, and the same writer who wrote our show wrote that show. Okay. And it was nice because I saw some similarities in the writing, mm -hmm. and uh, the music was completely different. Their theme was Mexican, so there was a lot of Mexican type music, which was it was so beautiful to listen to and and to hear these musicians who were my friends also, and it was fun to watch the show. But I was watching these artists as if I was playing in the band mm -hmm. because what's great about my show is I get to see all that live. You know, as much as the audience, because I am basically in the audience mm -hmm. if you think about it. Uh, and that's yeah. that's a real treat to watch them do what they do every night. It's amazing, actually. I you know I I get up and go and do my cardio in the morning, and then I come to work and I watch them doing flips in the air. You know, and it's just it's really mind blowing what it, they do. It it can be a inspirational thing when you see what kind of shape these athletes are in it's, it's it'll make you want to go work it, out oh it's incredible it really really <laughs> is it's amazing it really is and getting on to the show again the the general theme it's about tell us a little bit about the show This is, I think everybody has their own concept, but mm -hmm. for me, I think of it as a clown who's dreaming of his funeral, and he goes back in time and reflects on life as a child, and you'll see in one of the acts where they're jumping from bed to bed, but they're, they're trampoline beds, and they do these crazy things, and when we're kids, we... Come on, we all you jumped jump on, on beds. beds. You yeah. always did it. You jump from one bed to the couch or whatever. <laughs> And then he reunites with with people he was in love with at one point and and friends and he's basically trying to earn his wings to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's my concept on it. I could be wrong, you know, it's just but you'll see. I'll actually look yes. love to know well, what you we'll, think. we'll have to yeah, see yeah. How, how it ties in. How your, it goes. Your yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But that's that's my point on it. But okay. it, I I just think it's a beautiful show and you I think you'll agree. You know, it's cool. one of the a lot of times I go see Cirque shows. I don't get the story. I don't understand it. And I'm like, man, I don't know what's going on here, but the acts are great. Mm -hmm. But this one I got right away. And I was like, oh, this is, this. I could understand this one, gotcha. you know? So. Well, and this show, if I understand correctly as well, because of the nature, it's costumed kind of late 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah. It has the look of more traditional circus. Yes. As yeah. compared to a lot of the Cirque shows that will have 
imaginary creatures, creatures and, and all, all these kinds different of stuff things. Like yeah, that. like uh, when I saw Luzio, they had a lot of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, that it could be a, a little trippy, and, and you're kind of going, I'm not sure what this is, <laughs> you know, or or, or like uh, it, Ovo that they're like giant bugs and things. yeah, yeah. And this is like the first show that I can remember where the band we wear a lot of makeup mm -hmm. more than other shows actually there were a few other ones that did but most of the time the band doesn't wear as much gotcha. and, and then like they were i remember them telling me a joke where the creator decided like, all right this time the band's gonna wear all their makeup or something like that and but we wear a lot it's like kiss yeah. makeup also yeah. you know so i always joke around and tell people i'm, I'm the fifth member of kiss <laughs> you know <laughs> now do you do you do they have you go out on stage too or well we i have to come when we come out in the beginning of the show okay. i i basically greet the audience and joke around with them and then i go into my pit so yeah so basically i nice. am and then at the end we do we all do our bows mm -hmm. and I'm at the very end, so I'm the last one to go off. So I always do something funny there to the go. crowd, you know. Well, and for you bass players that are so used to hiding in a dark corner, <laughs> if you're going to be in Cirque, you better get used to yeah. kind of being out there a little bit yeah. because I mean, you there. can't just hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm right in the audience. Nice. I can, you know, shake hands. or be, I joke around with people when they're coming back from getting popcorn or a beer. And I'm like, hey man, where's mine? You know, mm -hmm. did you get me a beer? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. and actually one guy bought me a beer. Well, there you go. And I said, man, I wish I could drink this, but I can't. <laughs> <You're> working. <laughs> I'm working, working right here. here, you know. Yeah. He's like, oh, that's all right, man. Let me know if you want one towards the end, you yeah. know. Really, yeah. But I love the audience, so they're really fun. And, and everyone is funny, but my one joke with them is I always ask, like, okay, who's afraid of clowns? Because yeah. everyone's afraid of clowns, <laughs> you know. And I always have two or three hands to raise a hand. I'm like, okay, you have nothing to worry about, you know. There's a lot of clowns in this show. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So if you're afraid of clowns. Don't come. It may yeah. not be the right one. Stay word. away from the band. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how much longer is the tour running? I know this is okay. You guys are starting up after a little recess. Yeah. So we we're out this time now for eleven weeks. And we just finished a twelve week. So we go out usually for ten to twelve weeks, and then we get off for two weeks, mm -hmm. and then uh, but we finish up North America at the end of August, I believe, and then we head to Europe in oh, nice. uh, in mid September. And then we're there for a few years. And then from there, I don't know where we go, but they got us going to a lot of different countries, which is great. I never yeah. been to Europe, and that's the reason I took this, because oh, nice. I was like, are you guys going to Europe? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, sign me up. Because I, I, I always wanted to go and and get to play the show there. I'm so excited to do oh, that. And this is a great way to interact, I mean, with the arts. Oh, it's, oh, it's yeah. And, I, and this show... I think it's going to do fantastic in Europe. I mean, it's doing great in the U.S., but gotcha. in Europe, I think they're really going to love this. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and I better not forget to ask, how do you get your sound gear-wise? Because I know you're playing with kind of like a three-quarters or half size. Yeah, I have a... Um, I, I love David Gage in New York City. Okay. And David, I've known David since I was a young kid when I first started. So, uh, yeah, I have a Czechies bass. endorsement with david cage instruments and i love those guys they're fantastic and then i have an endorsement deal with lakeland okay leo sent me out that bass and then i use nord pickups mm -hmm. which i love and carrie's really done a great job with those pickups they're yeah. amazing man <laughs> And the sound guys, you know, when I switched out the pickups, we were in Quebec. And they're like, yeah, go ahead, plug it in, try it. And I tried. And it was just so yeah. loud and so beautiful at the same time. And they were like, oh, my gosh, this bass sounds incredible, you know. And they loved it. So I used those two basses. I have a couple of David Gage bows that I got, German bows mm -hmm. I use in the show. Uh, and then I run through Avalon preamps. Gotcha. 
and uh, then I got a bass mic that I use uh, for the upright and I do a blend between the mic and the uh, David Gage Realist pickup Nice. Which I like, especially for the Arco stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I, I like them to blend with the mic as well. well and one of the, the biggest challenges is miking upright. Yeah, I was worried because I thought, like, yeah. man, I'm going to get everything to come through this. But it's been pretty good. Because nice. spe- you'll see where the speakers are. They're right there. And I mm-hmm. thought, gosh, I hope this doesn't have a lot of feedback. Sure. Or nothing. Nice. Never once. It's been really, really good. Our sound department is fantastic. Fabulous. Really, really good. And then I just, we have a new guy, Dylan, who just started with us. He also is really good at setting up mm-hmm. guitars and basses. So it's nice to come back from a two week break and have your electric bass all restrung ready to go. And ready to go. And go. it's just perfect, man. I'm like, in to- I'm so spoiled. Yes, <laughs> you yes. know? Well, so. we don't want to keep you too much because we know yeah, Soundcheck yeah. is coming up. Yeah. But if people want to follow your stuff, Facebook, best place? Yeah, just look up Bobby Brennan. That would be the best. Okay. Just Bobby Brennan. And for Cirque, CirqueDeSoleil.com? Yeah, you, uh, slash Corteo is the yeah, show Corteo. I'm with. Absolutely. Yeah, come out and visit me and say hi. And yeah. He's on the audience. It makes yeah. it really easy. I love meeting bass players. There we go. So, yeah, yeah. And all musicians. Yeah. All people, actually, you know. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for taking time yeah, to chat you. with us. Folks, you've seen him here. Backstage, Cirque du Soleil, Corteo. Coming to you on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks for basing out with us here on BassMusicianMagazine.com.